Um, my background was in women's health, midwifery, so I, I kind of have a little more information on the reproductive system. I just gave this talk to some nurse midwives at the University of Washington. So I just pulled these slides and threw them in on the reproductive system. But endocannabinoids have been measured in a bunch of body fluids, um, and the receptors are found in both male and female reproductive tissues as well as placenta, uh, especially in female reproductive organs. Um, and they're involved in, you know, regulation of, the thing that's really important is embryo implantation. Um, and so what's been measured is that um, there, when there are high levels of functional cannabinoid 1 receptor and anandamide, that it inhibits implantation. So, you know, if you kind of make the leap, I guess you could say if people, if, if a woman's using cannabis chronically or heavily, it, it might have the same effect on so reproductive capacity. General. Here's a study showing lower pregnancy rates in users compared to non-users. So just something to remember if you're, you know, caring for uh, pregnant patients, potentially pregnant patients that are cannabis users. I think informed choice is always appropriate. So this is a topic that's, I think, really controversial. Um, but after learning the pharmacology of the cannabinoids and its role in embryonic development, specifically the development of the central nervous system, I think there is absolutely no way to say that cannabis use in pregnancy does not have an impact on the developing fetus because neurons, when they are making their way and making connections, and this isn't just in the embryo, it's not just in the newborn, this goes on until the brain is mature at age 25 to 28. The brain is still making connections. Um, the cannabinoid receptor is at the leading edge and is what anandamide is what is attracting these neurons to where they're gonna make their connections. So if you're throwing THC in there, and it does cross the placenta, and it does get transmitted in breast milk. Babies are getting THC in the womb and out of the womb, and it has an effect on their central nervous system development. We don't know what that effect is yet. But we know that the system has all these important roles, right? We've talked about this. And we've talked about, you know, the parts of the brain uh, we know that components of the endocannabinoid system are expressed really early in embryonic development, um, that it's involved in all of those things I was just talking about. And so the conclusion of this report is that long-term consequences of THC binding to CB1 receptor and modulating the system during neurodevelopment are unknown. And there is some growing evidence for the potential etiology of mental health disorders later in life. So some of these kids have been followed you know, into early childhood, later childhood, and, you know, not severe effects seen, some minor, minor effects. Uh, there's only three or four studies. There's been a longitudinal study going on in Canada for a while. Um, but there is speculation that cannabis may be a neuroteratogen and something that may not surface until adulthood. So, I, you know, I, my opinion, I have midwives call me should, should I tell this woman to use cannabis for her nausea and vomiting in pregnancy? You know, and it's a hard one. And women who use it claim it's just fine, it's harmless. And, um, but I think as healthcare providers, we really need to remain unbiased about it and give them the information so they can make informed choices. And, uh, and this is the information I suggest that you give, is that it does have an effect, we don't know what it is, and that as a healthcare provider, they should abstain.